This is One on One. We are pleased to welcome for the first time Dr. Terry Fulmer, who is the president of the John A. Hartford Foundation based in New York City, dedicated to doing Improving what? care of older adults. How'd this all happen, the foundation? It's an exciting story, actually. In 1929, John and George Hartford decided to take their extensive good fortune from A&P grocery stores and set up a foundation for the greatest good, for the greatest number. And for the past 35 years, we've dedicated our uh, efforts and our money to improving care for older adults. How so? Break it down, a couple of examples. Sure. So um, we've done it in a, in a number of ways. Initially, we developed the workforce. So we started centers of excellence in geriatric medicine, geriatric nursing, geriatric social work. We developed models of care, such as programs that help individuals prevent falls and to support family caregivers. And today, we're really emphasizing three areas. Creating age-friendly hospitals and health age systems. Age-friendly hospitals and health systems. Correct. And improving the uh, care for serious illness and, and end-of-life care. And finally, supporting family caregivers. Yeah. I was just saying this. I, it's always weird for me to do this because we tape these shows in the air later. Uh, as we tape this program in the summer of 2017, yeah. my dad's been dealing with some challenging issues, uh, uh, 84 going 85. But it's my mom who I worry about who is the primary caregiver. She is along with millions of others, is she not? There are at least 20 million family caregivers out there who are exhausted. They are generally, uh, they suffer from depression because of the amount of worry that they have in any given day because they're trying so hard to meet the needs of the people they love who are older and need care. That's but, with help. And Our that, family has help. Yeah. I wonder if families who don't even have that much help, how hard is it on caregivers? I'm so glad you make that distinction because most people don't have help. Most? Yes, and they use their neighbors, their friends, their family. And so those are the people we really have to be thinking about how to support them, what strategies, and we have really made a concerted effort to get the word out about how to support people who are at home without help. Mm. You know, Doctor, you talk about getting the word out. We're partners with the folks at Felicia University yes. and, and the Bartley uh, Health folks as well as part of a series we're doing on ageism, right, yes. aging in America. What is the word that needs to get out, to be very specific? Is it a public awareness yeah, effort? Yeah. And about what? Yeah. So the greatest success story of the 20th century is longevity. It used, it's We're just a, living longer. We are living longer. What we now have to do is live with quality and really think about how to not think of, old, of older age as a diagnosis. We want to keep people vital. We know that exercise and social engagement is extremely important to the well-being of older people. And by the way, there will be chronic disease and disorders as you get older. We know that about one in 10 people have Alzheimer's disease. One in 10. Yes. And we also know that that number will double with the doubling of the population. So the other psychosocial, emotional part of this, which fascinates me, for, for some of us who are in quote unquote middle age, mm -hmm. but won't be there forever, and mm -hmm. see our parents struggling and have seen so many others, our fear of getting older, yeah. our obsession with that fear mm -hmm. and ultimately what comes after that. Mm -hmm. Are we any better in talking about it? And I know this is a very deep question for public broadcasting, but I think about it a lot. Yeah. So you're really outlining the phenomena of ageism, which you commented on a minute ago. Are we any better at it? Here's how I test that. Sure. Where, when I'm in, introduced to new people, I'll say I'm a nurse and my, my area of excellence is geriatrics. And there's always a beat, and then everybody laughs. They go, ha, ha, ha. And what they're really saying, and then they'll say, well, I'm, I'm one of you. I, I need your care. And so they're already identifying and worrying about what's going to happen next to them. I think that we will have made a little bit of a difference when I can say I'm in geriatrics and people don't have that nervous laughter. What does an age-friendly health care system mean? So an age-friendly health care system means you get the right care at the right time in the right place. And what does that mean? Our foundation has some exciting examples. Yes, of, you add the economics in there as you do it as well. Yeah, Go and ahead. lower costs, of course. Thank you. And so our foundation has a program called Hospital at Home. What's it called? Hospital at Home. Hospital at Home. And so what that is, and it's uh, really been generated by some wonderful scholars at Hopkins in Mount Sinai in New York City, 
means that if you have, for example, pneumonia, you really don't have to come into a hospital. You can have your care at home when you are supported with the appropriate equipment, a person with the knowledge and skills to deliver that care, professional nurses, professional physicians, um, but you don't necessarily need to be institutionalized. Mm. And so we're finding some breakthrough ideas there. Dr. Your foundation supports a lot of research. Yeah. Well, well, well the research yes. matters. The information it matters. Does. But uh, as you know, my obsession is with public awareness. Yes. That's why we got into this business in the first yeah. place, to try to right. provide valuable information. How do you get the word out? And is it word of mouth? Is it systematic? What is it? I'd say we're systematic in, in a number of ways. We work with uh, a variety of organizations. Like there's a wonderful uh, Next Avenue is a PBS organization right. that pushes out uh, interesting information. We work with Politico. We work with Kaiser Health Network. We work with every group that can help us, and we have an expert communications team in-house as well. The key is to reach people who need it, and not just the patient again, but the caregivers. Exactly, and the public. You know, to keep them aware of uh, what's possible for a healthy aging process. It is not normal to fall when you get older. It is not normal to become uh, incontinent or to lose weight precipitously. Those are not normal things. It doesn't have to happen. It doesn't have to Real happen. Real quick, before I let you out of here, this career yeah. for you, this passion for you, mm -hmm. when did you know this is what you wanted to do? Uh, the first day I became a nurse. So I <laughs> really? became a nurse because my mother was a nurse and I thought she was terrific and uh, she was a real role model. But when I began my nursing practice, what I saw was a phenomena of save them and scorn them. So what I mean by that is that we could get your heart going again, we could cure your pneumonia, we could perhaps fix your fractured hip, but then the rest of it was not perceived as very interesting or important. Mm. And so that's been a passion ever since. The uh, John A. Hartford Foundation in New York City is doing important work. The president of that foundation is Dr. Terry Fulmer. I want to thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you very well much, Well done, Steve. getting the word out. We'll be right back right after this. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One-on-One -on -one with Steve Adubato has been provided by Felician University, Bartley Healthcare, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, Johnson & Johnson, New Jersey Sharing Network, Fedway Associates, and by Verizon. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios.